you know, they didn't want to overinflate my mm. ego. Yep. But at the same time, is that the right way to go? I mean, so yeah. parenting can raise all of these questions and we want to dive right into all of that hey, today. you know what? Yeah. Parenting is so difficult. <laughs> it is so difficult. It? There's so many things. <laughs> yes, it is. There's so many things. It is. Go, here we go. Yeah, this is like the greatest song ever. <laughs> I love how we do new songs every single episode. What do you think, it's Grace? It's just the best thing in the world, right? Who came up with this idea? I, I, this all, brilliant well, not uh, action. Kurt. <laughs> not Kurt came up with the idea, huh? Uh, yes, not Kurt. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of On Purpose Parents podcast. My name is Grace and across from me normally is Kurt. And if you are our, you, one of our YouTube watching parents, you will notice it is not Kurt. Yeah. Who's here? Who is not this voice? Kurt. It's host Chris. It's host Chris. <laughs> yes. Chris is usually the person in the corner that Kurt talks to you about staying in the corner. But you know what? Yeah. Kurt is not here today and you are not in the corner. You are in, in the main chair. Seat, yeah. sitting, sitting in, in his, his chair, chair, drinking from his cup, <laughs> you know, having just, a blast. Oh yeah. It's so much fun. Yes. You have all your gear set up too, because you play this role of MC tech DJ, all of the above <laughs> pastor. And so again, if you're a, an audio listener, we have all of his technology up in front and center right now so he can turn that music button on for us. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so much fun. Well, you know, Kurt I had called uh, yesterday and said, hey, I got called into some important meetings because mm -hmm. Kurt's a very important guy. I guess so. He, he's like, like in our church, he's one of the top 10, his position, top 10, most yes. important <laughs> positions. I would argue in the top three. Okay. All yeah, right. Yeah. So he's got like birth through college uh, age. Yeah. And uh, kind of he, huge. He's the pastor of all those ministries. He's yeah. over everything. Right. And it includes parent ministry, which mm -hmm. includes this podcast. So, yeah. So he's not here today, but we are super excited to have you, Chris, oh, joining the hot seat and being able to share with your with us your insights. I will say um, my husband said, too, whenever you talk and chime in during our podcast, he's like, I always love what Chris has to say. It's like it just brings in a lot of insight and truth and a short quip and Sam's side. the best. He really is. He, he's a great guy. I mean, oh. he married out of his league for sure with you, but he, he's a super dude. He's, he's pretty amazing. Yeah, he's, he's pretty cool. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll give you that. But well, today we are starting a new series. Yeah, we do this um, every once in a while. This has become sort of our pattern. We do like a three episode series. We'll do a Q&A. Sometimes we'll do what we call a one hit wonder where we dive in more to a specific question. But Today's topic is something very um, relevant, I think, in today's world and yeah. something we hope parents will find super helpful. We, it was a topic that we all felt really, um, you know, drawn towards in terms of just what it takes to the things that we want to invest in our kids as a topic of importance. So... Chris, do you want to yeah. introduce what our topic is? You, you know, one, one of the ways I've had parents ask me, how do you guys decide on mm -hmm. what, what to teach and what to talk about, what to have conversations about, what your topics are going to be, right? So the, one of the main ways we do it is we get emails or people will comment in, on the different uh, social media platforms mm -hmm. that we have, including YouTube, Mm -hmm. And they'll comment and just say, hey, would you do an episode on this? Or they'll have questions about something or prayer requests about something. And what I'll do is I'll kind of gather those together, shoot them over to you and Kurt. And then like 90% of the time, uh, well, well, let me say, no, I'm not going to go that way. I, I can't no? bash 90? Kurt. I can't. I'm, oh, I was going to oh. say something. I'm not going to mess with Kurt here. <laughs> do so it, one, do it. 100% <laughs> of the time, Grace, you come back and you're like, hey, we should do this, and here's the thing. And you kind of come back with a nice little outline, 
And Kurt's like, yeah, whatever, man, that sounds great. Let's do it. And and we do it. And it just it comes it. together so awesome. Yeah. So when you had talked about let's do resilience, that is such an important topic. And the first thing I was thinking is, what does resilience actually mean? <laughs> right. like, like, like what, what are we is talking it? about, yeah. really? And it actually means, just to simply put, bouncing back from tough times. Mm. And that's such an important topic to talk about because we want our kids to be adults that bounce back from tough times. Mm. So the series we came up with, the title, Flexing Resilience, Training Kids to Overcome Life's Challenges. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. And in the three episodes, today we're going to talk about bulking up your child's inner strength. And this is uh, where we're going to talk about confidence Mm -hmm. and self-worth and that type of thing. And then in our next episode, episode two, strengthening kids to turn defeats into victories. Mm -hmm. And then episode three is empowering kids to thrive in stressful times. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a great series. They're going to build on each other. Mm -hmm. So in the other two uh, episodes, we're going to ask people to, hey, if you can watch the first episode, because they because they do kind of build on each other, so yeah. we'll give a little definition of this and and what's important about it. Totally, and and I will say, you know, you were giving our listeners a little bit of the behind the scenes of how we come up with the topics. Yes, you and I will probably email quite a bit and say, yes, what do we think about this? And then producer Chris and now co-host Chris, I want to just share with the listeners comes up with all of these titles and creative words. And it's so fun. I mean, flexing resilience, bulking (laughs) up your child's Uh. inner strength. I mean, you have a a good vocabulary on you, so (laughs) it'll make it fun. All right. So um, should we dive right in to just some thoughts we have on this topic? Especially today, we're going to be talking about bulking up your child's inner strength. And really what we want to focus on today is what you were just saying, Chris, that foundational um, value of self-worth, of self-esteem, and raising children that know who they are as being one of the core and key components to raising resilient kids. Mm -hmm. And this is an interesting subject. Before I go into some of the, um, you know, thoughts that I had is, I do hear parents in our parental discussion sometimes worry both ends of the spectrum. One end is, you know, I really want my child to be more confident, Mm -hmm. to be more secure. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, you do hear a lot of, (laughs) are we coddling our kids too much? Are they becoming spoiled? Are we encouraging them too much? Right. And so sometimes I do think there's all of these different messages out there to our parents and we just want to unpack that a little bit and and have that discussion of how do we really equip our kids to be strong in their internal self-worth and value, but strike that balance where we're not raising, you know, spoiled or maybe kids that have blind spots about yeah. rural life and maybe their own behavior sometimes that we need to have that conversation. Yeah. Maybe they're overly confident or right. super arrogant and yeah. prideful. And right. we know that that happens right before you fall really hard. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> we don't want that to happen to them. Yeah. Cause I mean, I will talk to some of my friends that said, Oh, my parents, you know, never gave me a compliment because, you know, they didn't want to over inflate my mm. ego. Yep. But at the same time, is that the right way to go? I mean, so yeah. parenting can raise all of these questions, and we want to dive right into all of that hey, today. you know what? Yeah. Parenting is so difficult. <laughs> it's so difficult. It? There's so many things. <laughs> yes, it is. There's so many things. It is. If anyone's listening out there and you think also parenting is difficult, give us a like. <laughs> Let us know that we are not alone in this journey. And and again, this is what this podcast is for. This is what we're hoping to achieve with this podcast is to let parents know that they are not alone in this very wonderful and very difficult journey of parenting where most of the time we're like, are we doing it right? Like, yeah. Are we are we royally screwing this up or <laughs> or are we on the right path? We're always asking us that. Yeah. So talking about bulking up your child's inner strength. Um I have a few 
you know, encouragement, suggestions to give. And, um, you know, Chris, you may have as well. So my first one is to be intentional about answering the question, what part of me is lovable? Mm. And I think um, I heard this advice in my past that kids are always asking that question. What part of me is lovable? And that question really is a deeply rooted part of our human experience. And I think we are always asking that question, whether we're directly asking it or not. It's part of our innate nature and desire to be known, to be accepted, to be seen, to be part of a community, mm-hmm. to be wanted. And and I do think this is why a lot of times, sometimes people struggle with shame when you experience something that you feel is shameful or um, failure. There is It triggers this deep fear that, oh my gosh, we're not good enough. And when that happens, when we miss the mark, we're therefore going to be cut off from people. And the condemnation there then is that we are not lovable, the mm-hmm. answer to that question. Yeah. And kids, I think we, as parents, we need to remember that ki- even children from a very young age are asking that question deep down is what part of me is lovable? And, and again, based on the messages that they receive, what they think is the answer to that question, it starts to shape their worldview and how they view themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing to remember here is that question isn't always asked directly. And sometimes that whole dance of the question and the answer happens multiple times in Mm -hmm. a day, in a week, in a lot, you know, in a childhood, but it goes in it goes unnoticed because it's not direct. It's not like, you know, I come up to you and says, dad, (laughs) is this part of me lovable? Yeah. No, that's not. But yes, this is, it's not that direct. It's, it's sometimes something where things just kind of get lost in translation and messages are being sent that maybe wasn't exactly what the parents is intending to send. Mm -hmm. Parents are intending to send. So for example, um, I'll just give a few examples, but there's so many, if we just really stop to think about it, Parents that only seem happy when you get a good grade. Mm. The message yeah. there might be that a child internalizes is, oh, well, the smart part of me, the part of me that performs, that achieves some sort of a- award is lovable, but the part that doesn't is not. Okay, yeah. got yeah. that, check. Or or let's say a parent is super busy with work and working from home and yells at the kids playing outside the house maybe too loudly. They're having too much fun. Well, the message that might get internalized is, oh, the part of me that's lovable is not the part that's being a kid and having fun. It's the part that's just quiet, out of the way, not creating any disturbance. Um, you know, And that part is lovable. And the tricky thing here is I'm not saying parents should never, you know, try to communicate with their kids, like discipline, like be quiet if you're being too loud or set expectations or encourage kids to study, um, things like that. But my, my main encouragement here to parents is that we need to be intentional about making sure that the main message that we want to send to our kids, that they are lovable no matter what, doesn't get lost in translation that we're just intentional about saying you are worthy you are valuable and that's not based on what anybody else thinks it's not based on your performance it's not based on my mood or my you know um you know crankiness or hangriness at the moment it's you have inherent dignity because you're a child of god and yes we might have successes and yes we might have failures but that doesn't change the fact that you are lovable and worthy of love no matter what. And so it's really as parents being very intentional about just verbalizing that directly and doing that frequently. Um, And so I'll just wrap up my point with some examples, you know, with my kids, um, oftentimes when they do well in something, we'll, they'll get really excited and we'll get excited too. Like, Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you did really well. But Sam and I do make it a point to frequently add also but you know, this is not why we love you, you know? And so the kids know that they hear that, like we're still celebrate celebrating and having fun, but we always throw in that even if you didn't do well though, you know, when they were younger, we would ask, you know, like Zoe, if you didn't do well though, 
would we not love you? And she would be like, no, because, you know, she knows the routine because we kind of repeat that process. And so um, it is just following up on good times. It's following up on bad times. It's just don't not being afraid as parents to keep reiterating the reason why you are lovable is not any of this accomplishment, even if we're celebrating. So don't forget that. Don't mistake or don't let anything get lost in translation yeah. that this is the reason why. Um, you were lovable. And I think what that does is it creates that security that can mm -hmm. last for kids, no matter what situation or performance or outcome is happening in their lives that, okay, I, I am a worthy person. I'm worthy to be loved yeah, regardless of, you know, my successes or failures, which they will absolutely have growing up. Oh, so, yeah, that's so great. And you guys being present, is it, it means so much to them, right? When parents are present, when you guys are present with your ch children's lives and in, in what they're doing. And the idea that, that you say you're showing up to something makes them feel valued. You tell them those things that makes them feel valued. So when they're asking, not verbally, right? Mm -hmm. Those questions of, am I important? Am I valuable? Mm -hmm. do, do, do I matter? Is it even if I'm not doing that well or, mm -hmm. you know, performance wise or whatever, do they still love me? Do they still care about me? And they'll they'll get that from the people who are closest to them. Right. The, their value is really determined by the people who are closest to them, who love them the most. And that's why it's important that we connect them with Jesus in such a strong way and talk truths mm -hmm. about him. Because, you know, we, we what we say is on purpose parents, it's about raising interdependent, mm -hmm. lifelong followers of Jesus who desire to make a kingdom contribution. And the, the, the part of being a lifelong follower of Jesus is understanding that you stay close to him. He's your heavenly father, and he looks down on you, and he sees you, and he knows how valuable you are. You are so valuable to him, mm -hmm. and he created you. And, and Jesus died for you. He's got a purpose and plan for, for mm -hmm. your life, right? These things. So um, there's that example I think we've heard before of uh, someone taking a $100 bill out and saying, hey, who wants this mm -hmm. to, a, to a group of people? And, and people are like, hey, we all want it. And then he wads it up and he says, now who wants it? Oh, everyone still wants it. He throws it <laughs> on the ground it. and he steps on it and he rubs dirt on it, he smashes it. Now who wants it, right? And everyone's like... Well, it's still valuable right. because, you know, everyone sees it's a hundred dollars and our kids need to know that, that they're valuable in God's eyes, but also ours, um, that, that just, just how much we love them. There's, there's that other, uh, I think truthful process that, that we can think about that our, our thoughts determine our beliefs mm. and our beliefs determine our actions and our actions when we do them again and again, become habits and our habits become our character. It's who we are. Yeah. And ultimately so your destiny, right? So just kind of, you know, if, if you are someone who thinks, ah, eh, lying's okay. And you believe that. And then opportunities come up where you lie, you know, once in a while, mm -hmm. and then that becomes a habit. And now your character is you're a liar and people know that you're a liar and you can't mm -hmm. be trusted. Right. So with, with our kids, we want them to believe and know that they are valuable, mm -hmm. that that they're loved, no matter what their performance is, right? Yeah. No matter how that works out, and then they will, they will believe that they'll act that way, and you know that that type of thing. So, yeah, I think that's a that's a big part of uh, self worth, yeah. self esteem, confidence is what they think about themselves, right? So we don't want it to be too good about, you know, where yeah. they're thinking they're better than other people and right. arrogant and stuff like that. But, um, but we want them to feel good about themselves and who they are. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that kind of goes to what we were uh, talking at the very beginning is sometimes parents do wonder, well, we don't want to spoil our kids. And so there could be that hesitation to, well, I don't, I didn't grow up with parents that were over, affectionate with their words and so if I do that am I just making my kid a little bit weak mm. but um, I don't think that is the case in 
in this point. The point is you want to be very clear and articulate as a parent, you are the one giving the message that they are going to internalize that their worth is not tied to their performance. But what's great is that if you do that intentionally, you actually can empower the kids to have higher standards. You can push yeah. them. You can set disciplines. You can say, no, you can't play until you do your homework or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. You can still be a parent with structure, not someone that's just like letting their kids be spoiled and run around and coddled. It's just the foundation is intentionally letting them know who they are at the core yeah. that's not tied to other things. And so yeah. I think that can be actually the foundation to a lot of the other successes and performances, but in the right order. <laughs> um, so my second encouragement is to do is to do the right kind of praise. Mm. Um, so some parents now, if they feel, oh man, my child just is lacking confidence, or maybe I'm concerned that they don't have enough self-esteem. Our way that we might try to compensate for this is to praise our kids. Cause mm -hmm. that sounds like a wonderful thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then the temptation though might be to like over praise, over praise in the sense of like, no matter what they're doing, it's like, you you just did it perfectly, right? Like it's missing a little bit of reality. It's just like, no, no, no. Like you, that song that you sang was not out of tune. <laughs> it was like, you know, Mariah Carey level, right? Like you just be confident. And, and so the words that you might be saying is overtly uh, effusive and inaccurate, right? And sometimes yeah. praise can be like that. But um, what we want to, what one of the things that I want to share is that self esteem comes from one feeling loved and secure, mm -hmm. but it also comes from developing competence. Mm -hmm. And you know, the last part, developing competence, is tricky because you develop competence by learning new things, mm -hmm. which requires failing which requires mm -hmm. trying again, mm -hmm. which requires getting feedback on what you can do better, requires taking some risks, mm -hmm. trying again, messing up again, start that cycle again. Yeah. It takes time. It's something you actually have to put effort for. And so if you overpraise your kids where they haven't yet done anything <laughs> mm. and you're just like, you did it, you're perfect. Mm. Um, or that action that you did was exactly perfect, then you actually might be undermining their ability to grow in their self-esteem because they're not, you're not really encouraging uh, them to pursue competence mm -hmm. in whatever it is that they might be doing. So also constantly complimenting them might make them feel like either delusional, like they are perfect, but they can't really see what's really going on mm -hmm. or they know you're off but it feels good. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to keep trying to keep up this facade, this inaccurate facade, because I need to keep up this image like of getting this praise for something that I'm not fully competent in. Mm -hmm. And then you start to hide, right? Like you, you, yeah. you do whatever it takes to get that compliment, to get that affirmation, yeah. but you can't show any weakness. You can't show any failure because, um, because it's not based on something you feel super secure about. Um, and we know this too, as adults, like there are certain compliments and praises that really like don't, they're just like, Oh, nice. But like, they're kind of surface like, Oh, you're just, you were so great. And maybe it was just kind of thoughtless compliments, like just someone who's like complimenting everyone, but it's not very thoughtful versus some compliments that you get from people that are super, thoughtful that mm -hmm. you know it's accurate mm -hmm. in a way like to yeah. to your what's actually reality um and it feels different like it sinks in you know different differently so um i think what i'll en encourage is my encouragement here the point is to do the right kind of praise one thing that has really helped sam and me is to praise things that will encourage kids to continue to gain that competence mm -hmm. in things. And that yeah. is praising things like the effort, yep. praising the work that went behind something. Yeah. Even if they do well in something, you're, 
you're complimenting the effort that they took to do well. So one example is, um, so I put my kids in like a one day a week Korean school class, Mm -hmm. but, um, (laughs) because, because my parents are Korean or from Korea yeah, and I grew up speaking Korean, but lost a lot of it because I grew up in America and my kids were born here and they don't really speak anything. So part of me is like, Oh, a little bit of your, um, tradition to, yeah. to learn the languages. And so, but they, it's like a three hour once a week and we don't speak it in the house, Korean in the house. So mm. it's very difficult to pick up a language. Even when you get really mad. Yeah. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Only to Sam, a few, few choice words. No. Um, but it's very hard to learn a language if no one's speaking it. Right. So, yeah. My kids are going and Zoe towards the end of um, the year was getting stressed because there was a test coming up. And Mm. so she cried a couple of times like Mm. and I was like, it's okay because we don't expect you to do well Mm. (laughs) because we didn't study for it. Like Mm. we didn't put the effort in. And that's not, you know, that's on all of us. It's just kind of our situation, too. We've been busy. We didn't set aside time to do that. Mm -hmm. And also we don't speak in the house. So there are certain things that are understandable. But um she ended up going that Saturday and she did really well on her vocabulary test. Mm-hmm. But when we came back, so we were all like super excited, like, wow, like you did really well, like great job. <laughs> um, but the the example here is we try not to just say, you're so smart. See, Zoe, you, you shouldn't have been afraid. You're smart. Like you did it. It wasn't that like, even though that comes out very naturally, like that's the praise that seems natural to give. But we, we intentionally were like, Zoe, you were really nervous about this, but you didn't give up. Like during the week, like you tried so hard. That's so awesome. You know, you kept going at it. You were expressive of her feelings to us. Thank you for sharing. And so we kind of picked out her journey and in this case it ended well, Mm. but we were still complimenting the stuff that we could still compliment even if it didn't go well. Mm-hmm. So we're in, we're praising, that's what I mean by let's try to praise the right thing. Can we praise the thing that they can carry with them? Yeah. Um whether the outcome is successful or not because that's really going to be what propels them to continue to try new things in life. Yeah. And to explore things and not give up when they face failure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you bring up such a, a great point too. Like the first thing we talked about was the thoughts and how they think and how important that is. But the words of parents mm-hmm. are so important, right? They can, they can really hurt or they can really help. Mm-hmm. And we need to make sure the words that we speak are, first of all, like you said, true. So we don't want to lie and encourage and say something that isn't true. So, but there are other things that are true in that situation where you could encourage and and build up, mm-hmm. you know, your your child in that particular area. Like you said, you know, you're you're brave for doing this. You work so hard at this. These are great things, you know, and and these are wins. Yeah. And, um, we'll talk a lot more about that in in uh, episode two. But but the idea of words is just uh, them being so powerful. It makes me think of you know, when when I first started. Um, parenting. This is a while ago. So my son Jacob is, is 33, uh, 32 now. And, um, and then Kaylee is 28 and Macy Joy is 24, the, the baby. Oh, the and, baby, yeah, the 20 year old baby. Yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> if she's listening to this, which she probably is, cause she's such a big, she's just so such a awesome supporter Aww. of me. But, uh, That's amazing. honey, you know how much I love you. Oh, but, uh, shout out, 24-year-old but, yeah. baby shout out. <laughs> <laughs> but when, when Kaylee, the 28-year-old, when she was little, uh, she's she was, I mean, she was probably two. And I heard this story that uh, a Miss, Miss America had, had uh, shared, that when she was a little girl, she the postman would always come to her house and would always say to her, hello, how's my little Miss America doing? Oh. Like, Every single day for for years, he would come around every morning. Hi, my little Miss America, you're so pretty. How are you doing? Well, she actually ran for Miss America and won. Mm. And she points back to th- oh, this wow. guy's yeah. you know words building her up. So I kind of use that principle with Kaylee uh, when she was two. And every single morning without fail, you know, get her out of bed. And I'd say, 
Hi, my pretty little Miss Billionaire. How are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing, my little Miss Billionaire? So I would say... <laughs> I, want to hear waiting, the, I want to hear the end of I'm, the story. I do too. I'm waiting for that to pay off. But but the idea of, of words being powerful, it, <laughs> mm-hmm. it is. And, you know, positive versus negative. And I remember I had this coach, I, these two coaches. I played football in high school. And one of them... He didn't like me very much. Okay. He was actually the uh, the head coach. Oh. And uh, he he would say things like when I'd be out on defense and tackle someone, he'd be like, man, nah, Reed, you hit like a girl. Oh, really? You hit like a girl. So that was kind of his way of making me feel bad. I don't okay. know if that yeah. was motivating. So I'd go away and I, and I would. And then we had this other coach who, who was amazing. His name yeah. Jim Pendleton. And he was a... Uh, uh, we called him Conan because dude was so big, just okay. ripped. You know, that was kind of a big movie in the eighties when, when I was in high school. And, uh, and he, he would always just say, you know what? Don't listen to that. You know what you are? Cause I've seen you hit before. He says, you're a truck. He said, mm. you're no, you're a tank. You run over people. Wow. And I have that in my head and believe yeah. that I get out there and I would, I would play a lot better than, than the other encouragement. Right. Yeah. The really cool piece to that is, is uh, my son, many years later in high school, a different high school, had that same coach, the cool one. The second one, one the cool one. Yeah. Day. yeah. Uh, for wrestling when, oh, when my wow. son wrestled out there. So that was that was pretty fun. Wow. But my son out there wrestling, he, uh, he, he Jacob tried everything, man. I mean, he, he was involved in so many things. In fact, kind of talking through this thing about being resilient makes me think he is such an, a, res, a resilient man. I can't believe mm. as a kid, all the things this guy tried. Mm. I mean, he was involved in music and playing different instruments. He was singing. Okay. He, he, he would sing. He was in plays. Wow. He was in musicals. He played football, baseball, wow. basketball, soccer. I mean, just very multifaceted. Any, so many sports. Yeah. yeah. He did, and he did wrestling uh-huh. in, in there too. But he did fantastic in school, most subjects, but some not so much. You know, he, I mean, he, he grew up to be like an adult who jumps out of airplanes for fun. And, oh, my. I mean, he just does, <laughs> he does so many unbelievable What's things. What's going right? on in his head? <laughs> I know. Huh? But he had that, uh, that resilient type mm-hmm. spirit, that confident spirit. He wasn't like great and excelled in, in all these different things. Some things he was better than others, but he would, he, he would, just try things. Right. He, he he wouldn't give up yeah. when he failed, which we'll talk more about, you know, like in episode two. But yeah, yeah I remember being uh, in the stands and uh, and watching him wrestle and he would just get pinned mm-hmm. like all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and we're there and we're watching, and, you know, afterwards, you know, I wouldn't be like, yeah, you're a great wrestler. It would, uh, you know, be be more of, you know, you work so hard yes, at this. Right. You 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 lasted a little bit longer this time. Yeah. You had a great move on this one thing and you're you're but you got to speak words that are true yep. and encouraging both, right? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. It's so and in a way, what a privilege we have as parents to do that. I mean, yeah. we've been given our children as gifts from God and we have such a short window of time with them. And a lot of times we feel, oh, like, you know, we don't have as, it might be like very materialistic, like, oh, these kids get this and our kids don't, or they're going on this trip or they have these amenities. And we can get very distracted with a lot of these external uh, material type things. But one of the best gifts we can give our children is instilling in them through our voice just the truth about their value, their worth, and the encouragement of the things that propel them to continue to try new things, even when they face uh, discouragements or failures, and ultimately to have that be internalized in them so that they can be resilient, so that they can do exciting things like jump out of a plane, if that is so exciting for them, (laughs) or whatever it is that is exciting for your specific child. I mean, what a beautiful thing that it's a, it's an actual honor and a privilege to be able to um, participate in that for our children. And it's so hard for some parents to, to think that way or do that because 
they weren't raised mm. in homes that yeah. modeled that. Right. Right. They were raised in homes where you, you know, you didn't get anything or you got a ton of negative mm-hmm. and it, it's just tough for you. It's tough for you to even accept a compliment right. or, or something like that. Right. right. So it's the, these are the things that make parenting so hard, yeah. you know, and like you said, it's, it, it, we don't do it alone. We're not mm-hmm. meant to do any of this alone. Right. We need each other through that. We need God's strength through that. And you need a support system. You need other parents. And that's why, um, you know, that's why we do this podcast. Mm-hmm. It's it's uh, just for parents. It's to help them and see how we can kind of share some of our experience and, and, yeah. and, and encourage uh, encourage you guys out there, parents, that you can uh, know that you can you can do this. You got it. We're here for you. Mm-hmm. And um but yeah, that's just that those words are super important. It's great. Yeah. So we can be resilient as parents too, because mm. we're going to, we're going to mess up. So yeah. <laughs> how we can keep on going like, oh man, yeah. <laughs> sorry kids, your... <laughs> let's try again tomorrow. <laughs> I'm ta- a resilient parent. We'll try again. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking, I'm just thinking of so many failures of me yeah. that I've done. I'm like, okay, I said I wasn't going to regret that or bring that up in my head again. So yeah. I need to <laughs> I need to let that <laughs> but <there's>... forgive myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, beautiful. Love that. Okay, my last um, encouragement on the subject of really bulking up their inner confidence, their self-esteem, their self-value, that self-worth, which is really just the foundation of resiliency um, and, and a privilege that we have as parents to be able to feed into that and help develop that in our children is to institute institute chores and responsibilities around the house for your kids. Um, So giving your kids age appropriate chores at the right time. I mean, it may not be relevant to all parents out there at different ages. For us, we started, I think a couple years ago. So our kids might've been like second grade, the youngest, maybe second grade um, and the oldest, like fourth, fifth grade. Um, but even if they let, let don't, let me cut mm-hmm. in real yeah. quick with something because I've just like I'll go on YouTube and I'll just kind of search like random things okay. and things that are funny and stuff with parenting because I like to <laughs> use those in clips whenever I speak. And there's this guy in Australia, I think it is, okay. and he has this. So if if you guys search on YouTube, uh, how how to get your baby to clean the house <laughs> or how to get your baby to clean the your car, six month old things like it's actually. A little baby that can barely walk and the dude has him cleaning, cleaning the stuff, house all these chores <laughs> and it's so funny how he does it and the baby the what the baby does so anyway yeah just go go watch it now i'm gonna have to go find that you got to i started so. too late i said i was like second grade and fifth grade but i should have started at six months yeah i'm behind <laughs> that's funny um but the idea behind this is that uh really this is not for you. Cause sometimes when we think of chores, it's, it can be, which is not wrong. It's like, I'm so busy. Like I'm helpful. so tired. Mm-hmm. And we're doing all the work around the house. You guys are big enough. Now you do some. So it, that's not like a wrong, I think motivator per se, no but way. I do think there is something like a benefit that's even beyond that, which is it helps the kids know. And it's really an, an important opportunity of giving your children a sense of purpose and something where they can have achievement and accomplishment and then also know that they are a team player in this family. And so that sense of you have a purpose in this team, you have a role, Mm. we all have responsibilities. It's not just parents serving you or in maybe some households, kids serving parents. It's not about power. Mm -hmm. It's you are an important and valuable member of this team. And so even if they don't do that chore perfectly well, you know, you could let them know you appreciate their efforts. You could praise them for the things that they do well, um, encourage them to keep doing it. And sometimes it can become a battle gr- battleground, right? Like, why aren't you doing your chores? You didn't do your chores. And so mm-hmm. that could trigger some, some arguments. But if we think of it more as an opportunity for them to grow in their understanding of themselves as a team player, that actually encourages or feeds into self-esteem because you're, again, when you know that you're just not some isolated person either being served as royalty or 
serving others only, but you're a valuable, important member of some unit, that helps you realize, oh, I have something to contribute. I'm important. I'm an important piece of this pie. And if I fail, it has consequences on people that I care about. And, oh, I can see how the things that they do also affect me. And that really does help build, I think, a sense of their value in society or in some sort of organization or unit. Um, and, and in subtle ways, I can see this sinking into our kids too. Like the other day, they didn't do their chores. And sometimes, you know, like we talk about parental uh, failure, sometimes, uh, you know, it's like Sam and I will definitely be, we'll have those battlegrounds. Like mm. you didn't do your chores or like, <laughs> why aren't you doing it? Or, da, da, da. Um, or you did it hap you know, haphazardly or not fully. Um, but the other day we were able to have a really good conversation I was able to, it was like a, a, I was able to control and think clearly with my words in that instance. So it wasn't just like yelling or arguing, but it was like, Hey, you guys, you know, you, I'm asking you to do this, not because this is just to help me, mm -hmm. but you guys, you guys are important member of the family. Like what you do matters. Mm -hmm. It matters to me. It matters to dad. It, it affects our family. Mm -hmm. And so part of this is to help you guys understand that you are important, that you're a valuable team player and your actions affect the team, you know, and, and how can we encourage you in this small way to learn that responsibility? Cause it's not always easy to do that, you know? So it was it's like so a good. dialogue that yeah. way. And you could tell it wasn't like, I don't want to do my chores. It was sort of like, <laughs> Oh, I see. I'm, I'm a valuable member of this team. I should, I should step it up. You know, I should yeah. do my chores. And so in that case, that was a positive outcome of our conversation on chores. But the encouragement to parents is, yeah, don't be afraid to give your kids responsibility, but not to just hammer on them and to criticize or to alleviate your workload per se. But really it's because you're giving them opportunity to exercise purpose and accomplishment within the family. And that's something they can hopefully take with them to other spheres of their life as they do more and more things outside the family as they grow up. Oh, that's fantastic. That this fun, fun episode. It was so good. <laughs> so so what what the child thinks about themselves, mm -hmm. the self-esteem, confidence, words that they hear, mm -hmm. in particular from uh, just people who love them so much. God's word, you know, reading the Bible to them, that kind of thing. But also your word as parents, yes. super important. And then... Having a sense of purpose. Give them those chores. Yeah, make, put them to work. <laughs> Six months, you guys. Don't be late like I was. <laughs> Start them early. No. <laughs> That's so great. You know, with our kids, we didn't uh, pay them to do chores. What we would do is we'd pay them to read books, that oh, kind yeah. of idea. That's so cool. if they if they read a book that we picked out for them, you know, and, and we'd get like fun ones too and stuff yeah. like that, we'd have them uh, write just like a, a paragraph on that. And then we would pay them, oh, you know, back so then cool. like 10 bucks was a lot. So we'd give them 10 bucks. And oh, if it was a bigger 10 bucks one, is a lot now. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> to give to kids. <laughs> But, but that idea of doing chores makes you a part of the family. We did yeah. the same thing with that. Love I think that's, that. that's awesome. so good. Well, so. well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. We really, we know time is a precious thing. And so we appreciate and value the time that you spend with us to trust us with your time to have conversation on parenting. And we look forward to seeing you next week yeah right up there click that way up there click that one right if you haven't seen that and i bet you haven't seen that yet click that one right there subscribe click right here all. if you haven't done that yet <laughs> hey leave comments uh talk to us we'll answer we'll answer whatever you leave in the comments section okay yes we love to hear from you yeah. thanks everyone see yeah. you next time right.